Hey y'all, my name is Mel and this project is meaningful to me because it's a platform we created for women to freely express themselves and be the loud and proud confident women that they're entitled to be. Hey, I'm Vicky and just like Mel, I've been in and witnessed too many situations where I felt prejudged and misunderstood or even worse was provoked and later on was labeled as crazy for loving myself enough to stand up for me. Honestly, if I had a dollar for each time I've been called crazy or too much simply for standing up for myself or asking questions when things didn't add up, I'd be on an island I bought with that money right now. And I almost started to believe it, that it was me. But then I realized over time that my voice was my power. And through my story and through this podcast, I hope to inspire women from all walks of life to find their courage and speak up. I'm beyond over being told to take it. And I wanted to be the voice for the ladies who aren't quite ready to roar just yet. Women aren't to be placed in a box. We come from different backgrounds and have different journeys. And that's pretty much how we become ourselves and find our purpose. So a man has no place telling us how to be. Neither does society. I really hope women listen to this podcast and feel heard and realize there's nothing wrong with a little crazy as long as it means you're freely expressing yourself. This podcast will touch on all things woman. Let's get crazy. So speaking of crazy, let's talk, let's just get right to it. Let's talk about that Tory Lanez, Megan Thee Stallion mess. <laughs> <sighs> a mess. All I have to say a mess. about it to start off with is what the entire fuck is that? What, what, what the fuck is that? What is it though? And then it's it's people's reaction to it for me. Like it's the, it's the men that are still willing. I'm not going to stop listening to toy lanes over this, blah, 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 blah. Are you dumb? Are you? But the thing about it is like, okay, fine. Whatever. Don't stop listening to his music. It's not like he peed on anyone. Okay, fine. Cool. But (laughs) it's like, can we not defend his actions? Like I literally before, the thing about it is when these things happen, I tend to stay quiet because I, I want to see how it's going to play out before I just throw my uneducated two cents in there. Um, nobody was there. So we cannot like the fact that people have such have rallied behind his decision to shoot her in such a way where they're like, like I had a debate with a man who basically was saying that if she was hitting or beating on him, then it was in his right to defend himself, which he's not wrong. If anyone is hitting or beating on you, you are in the right to defend yourself. But as a man, did with you not gun? have in, Yeah, did you have not have it in you to defend yourself with your own strength? And you have a bodyguard in the car and then come to find out that he never even put, she never even put her hands on him. So it's like so many <laughs> men like gun ho and just being like, yeah that's what you do it's like is it what you do like i had to ask this guy that i was debating Mm -hmm. with i have to say to him were you raised by a woman and is this what she taught you or are you tarzan and you were raped by raised by apes and and you don't know anything because it just doesn't make any sense what in the fuckery like for me it's the is the um, like i was just saying um earlier before we got on i mentioned that i saw a post today about a guy saying oh you know what? I don't. I, uh, I'm tired of double standards. Um, how come everyone was calling Takashi Six Nine a snitch, but no one's calling Megan Thee Stallion a snitch? First of all, first of all, first of all, <laughs> Takashi, whatever the fuck it is, is out here calling himself a thug, calling himself a gang member. You're snitching. That's against right. the code. I'm not in right. the streets or nothing like that. You're snitching. That's against the code. Megan Thee Stallion may call herself a savage. She never called herself a, a gang member. She never said that she was part of any type of organization or anything like that. Right? For her to owe anybody shit, she's a regular, I think it was Bun B who said it, she's a regular civilian like everybody else, okay? She, she, she has all women, children off limits. Everybody knows that. People who have nothing to do with that street life, off limits period it doesn't even make any sense first of all she's a woman how dare you even pick up your gun to 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 aim it towards her it makes absolute there's no excuse for that and people to say like oh how come you guys are all upset with takashi for snitching on people who robbed what they say they said they robbed him you are a gang member hello 
you are going to get hurt in some in some way, shape, or form at some point. She's not a gang member. She's just a woman who was just, you know, enjoying her night and ended up not feeling like she wanted to be in that vehicle anymore. And he had an issue with it and decided to harm her. <laughs> not only that, like, um, I, again, don't quote me on this, but through a conversation I was having with a friend <clears throat> this past week, he um, is someone who, you know, follows Tory Lane's music and follows his interviews because people who are men, especially, I realize they love to watch his interviews. I guess he has something worthwhile to say. I've never really been, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh my God, I used to love Tory when like <laughs> i've never really gotten into him too much i'm very big on energies and there's something about his energy that has always just not done it for me like i just rather not always not rubbed us the wrong way That's yeah nice. and with you as well like mm -hmm. you've always said that he just something yeah. about him is just nasty like his his something about his aura even yeah. though i've never met him i don't know him from anywhere mm -hmm. just through the tv screen something but many him. other females were saying that many other females right. have came out and said that he has a nasty attitude so something about him just rubs me the wrong way so i've never really been a tory fan i i have you know listened to bumped a couple of his his summer hits like everybody else but i'm not a tory lanes fan so that's why i would say don't quote me on this um someone who i know who was more so a fan did explain to me that he had made a statement basically saying that if he has to take a gun to wherever it is he's going then he's just not gonna go and it's like hmm that's interesting because if my huh. memory serves me correctly you were on your way from a, Ky a Kylie Jenner function at her house. So what was at Kylie Jenner's house that you, you felt the need to take a gun with you and then to further use it on Megan Thee Stallion? And like, yeah, he needs, it, he it's needs one thing, um, like, mm -hmm. okay, like you shot at her. Okay, fine, okay, right. fine. Maybe you hit her once, okay, fine. But you shot her twice? From what I understand, there was bullets. I don't know if maybe there was a bullet in one foot and fragments of a bullet in the next. But mm -hmm. that says to me that you shot at her and more than once. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong with that picture. And any man yeah. who owns it for any reason, like the guy that I got into the debate with was trying to tell me that it was acceptable because women, women basically get away with a lot more in the eyes of the law than men do, which I'm as not far sure as what? what as far as if the police show up for domestic violence and you're a black man from what he was explaining to me his point of view was that as a black man the officer will will antagonize and fuck with you without even oh asking. but did she not protect him though did she not protect him did she not get shot in both of her feet and still decide to protect that man's life despite the fact that he just tried to ruin hers like it just doesn't make any there's no yeah <laughs> don't get me started like, on top of like that it's the part where he's been silent for weeks and now his team is just like running around telling lies about how she put her hands on him and blase blase and again even if she had snatched a brand nice. new hairline from the front to the the back mm -hmm. it doesn't make a difference because from what i understand there was a security guard in there so what mm -hmm. are you in their security for, sir? If you are, if, if, let's just say she had put her hands on him. Right. In what world are you not, is your security guard not able, if he's driving to pull over the car and be like, bitch, you gotta go. You gotta get out. Cause at this point you're putting your hands on my client. Right. That, you know what I'm saying? And at what point as a security guard, do you allow your client to pull a weapon? I'm confused. The point of having security is so that you can just live your life and feel safe with the people around you. Like, why do you yourself have to pull a gun on a woman exactly. who was not pulling anything towards you and who was walking away? That's fucked up. It and is. It, it's to me is the perfect literal like situation that describes what black women are to black women, black men in 2020. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just getting worse as far as I can see because I didn't think that there would still be men out there trying to justify Tory's actions, like still trying to find some type of loophole explanation as to why maybe perhaps you're a man, 
you guys are just sit, sitting here with all your bravado and all your entitlement and just feeling like men, you know, all your, your, oh, this is a men's role and this is a woman's role. Okay, if you're so manly according to your standards, why do you feel like you need to defend yourself with a weapon against a woman who does not have a weapon to defend, to defend herself with? She didn't aim a gun at you. Your life was not in danger. You know what I mean? So it's like, for me, it's unexcusable. Um, there's no reason to be thrown in Chris Brown and whoever else people have been trying to throw in. Tory is at the, he has a special spot in hell for what mm. he did because it was unnecessary and uncalled for. She did not deserve that. As far as I'm concerned, she said she wanted to get out of the car several times. He did not allow her to do so. I have been in the situation, many situations where I'm ready to go. Yep. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And I, I was not permitted to do so. And when I tell you I was getting ready to break every motherfucking thing around me, mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So her just wanting to get out of the car already is frustrating enough. So for you to just pull out a weapon and shoot her in her feet, like what is for what like he's basically just <laughs> you know what i mean like it's like for for why the bitch asked this of it all As what was the reason like, he's like he was like hmm bang bang like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what in the male entitlement cry baby bullshit oh my god and then and then it's like i just like man canadian men Black Canadian men. Look, trash. Like, I just want to separate y'all for a second. Black Canadian men. What mm. the hell is going on with y'all? What mm. is, why are y'all so upset? You guys are so upset. Like, I'm, I, I, I personally, I'm going to say it. Y'all going to be mad. Whatever. I love Americans. Love, love Americans. I love American women. I love American men. I love the culture as far as Black culture they have created something that is their own and that is replicated no matter what kind of black you are at some point you have seen something that a black american has done and you're like oh that's cool they yeah. trend they are the trend period whether yeah. we like it or not it doesn't make a difference they are the trend that's just what that is and i i live for it i i really really do so do i canadians grew up in the dmv what's good <laughs> a lot of canadians do not identify with that same sentiment i don't really care about that yeah. i will say though having american friends and having dealt with american men versus well currently dating an american man versus having dated canadian men i'll never go back i will never go back because there is a sense like we of say in quebec no merci no thank you <laughs> okay i'll never hard pass back. Ever, because there's something about Canadian <laughs> black men that is very lost, very mm. Uncle Tom, very it's like, like very like just you, very you have no to give up. It's just <laughs> and not, again, if this is not you, if you don't do not identify with this type of Canadian black man that I'm talking about, then don't feel butt hurt about it. It's not about you. But yeah, if you feel butt hurt, it's probably about you. I'm just saying. Yeah. There's something. I mean, like I just had one cuss me out online. Um, I don't remember what I think it was because what was the fucking reason again? I had just had one cuss me out online. I don't remember what it was. I don't remember what the I think he was talking about. Yes, that's what it was. He said, All you women out there with stretch marks and saggy titties and cellulite, you know, get off of OnlyFans and blah blah blah. Or you know what I mean? And then when I told him, my answer was simple. What's it to you? Like I, I mentioned in the past, um, in our last podcast. I was called a hoe. I was told to go take care of my kids. I was disrespected. Like to the point where like you would think I, I i heard that i stole money from this man you would think that you know what i mean you would think he knew me personally from somewhere talking to me like that so this is kind of what we have to deal with with canadian men i've never really had an american man disrespect me like that although i have to say there are unfortunately black men here who need to heal and therefore don't know how to act um the men in canada don't know i think it's just a lack of like they don't know how to act Whether a lack of depth a lack of, of experience god they're just so, like <laughs> like i i i am so team black men because i want to see them win i don't care for men in general just because of the things that i've been through and the things that womp, 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 womp. i have officially like that's just not even on my radar i really don't care yeah However, when it comes to seeing people win, I would love to see Black men win because they are the other group of people like ourselves 
who are really, really unfair in the world. Mm-hmm. As fucked up as this is about to sound, the more I turn on my phone, my TV screen, the more I leave my house myself and go through it, and I keep seeing things where Black women are being disrespected and by Black men, it, it's desensitizing me. It's mm-hmm. making me not want to take part mm-hmm. in the marches and the preaching mm-hmm. of killing our Black men. It's making me want to stand up more for ourselves and be like, hey, before we can rally for you again, how about you start respecting the fuck out of this? Because nobody, nobody has the back of a Black man like a Black woman. I don't care what nobody says. I don't care. I don't want to hear it. I don't hear what the fuck it is. I don't want to hear the explanations. I don't want to hear it's 2020. I don't care about the white girls and the Asian girls and Latino girls who are rallying as well. It doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter because nobody holds you down like we do. Nobody. And you constantly have the nerve to disrespect the fuck out of us. And then, and then something really happens to you, you back over here. So what is it all Mm. for? What is the back for? Mm. What do you gain? Because at the end of the day, when you disrespect somebody who looks like you, the others still look at you like you're nothing but a Negro. So you might as well yep. find some respect. Respecting a Black woman is respecting yourself, is respecting your mother, your grandmother, your ancestors, your cousins, your sisters, your aunties, your, your daughters. Your ancestors. Mm-hmm. How would you feel mm-hmm. if your sister, the part for me is the part where these are the same men who will be ready to roll ride around town looking for the one who hurt their niece or hurt their daughter or hurt whoever. And and exactly. And guess what? Even if you have a daughter with um, a a Spanish woman, a white woman, an Asian woman, guess what? Your baby's still black. Okay. That baby is still going to be either a black man or a black woman based on society's rule that that's just what it is it doesn't matter if your baby's light skin with curly hair and blue eyes your baby is black so what type of environment are you creating for your child's future what type of image are you portraying out there are you putting out there it doesn't matter my brother had a child with a white woman my niece is black to me i don't you know what i mean like i don't care what it is she's black to me so when she's gonna grow up does he want her to grow up in an environment where you know people are mistreating black women because she's still black nonetheless do you understand what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's dumb. It's a dumb concept. Respect and protect Black women at all times, at, for, at all costs. You know, for your mother, as you say, for your ancestors, for your nieces, for your, your sisters, for your aunts, everyone who, who took, how can I say, everyone who, especially for people who were raised by single moms, everyone who took that, how can I say, how do they call it? You know, when you run track and then it's like, <laughs> what do they say? Who took the, the flame or took the, the, who took charge of you, let's say, right? Anyone who was like, all right, you got to go to work. Let me watch the baby. Let me, you know what I mean? Anyone who tapped in to come and, and basically contribute to your upbringing. Your life. Out of respect for those people. Protect Black women. See your mom in other Black women. See your sister in other Black women. You know what I mean? Agreed. Agreed. Nonsense. Another thing that I don't understand that Black men don't see is that we're not saying that it's, again, I'm pretty sure we touched on this on the last last show. Mm -hmm. We're not saying that it's that you can't be with who you want to be with and love who you want to love because Lord knows the second a Black woman asks for some respect, she's bitter, she's angry, she's salty. No offense. I'm going to say this for all the Black women. When you see us walking down the street minding our good old thickness business, and you're walking down the street with your white girl, the white girl who's staring us, staring at us like she wants to set us on fire because she thinks that we want want you. The one thing that always passes through my mind is a baby girl, that is not the one I would want. So you can you can keep them and keep on walking. You don't have to stare at me like you want to set my whole my whole <laughs> face. That's for me. <laughs> It lets me know that that is a man who has not instilled in his woman that he is a black man first. And anything around him is most likely going to be black, like his family members, his childhood friends. And you're going to have to respect that. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, this is not going to work. Having, being in an interracial relationship and acting like color doesn't exist, that's not the point. It's acknowledging that color exists. You guys are different mm-hmm. from two different backgrounds. And you guys mm-hmm. are going to have to find a way to 
respect each other's culture and each other's background. Right. Because a white woman cannot take home a black man who's going to be disrespectful, not dress the part, not talk the part, not act the part. Even if you got to turn... Or they don't even dare to do that with white women. Even if you have to turn Jerome into Terry for two hours, Mm. make sure you wear a button down and a tie to dinner so your dad don't want to put a bullet in. You have to do that. Why is it not the same way? Why can't you teach these girls, whether they are white or anything else, to respect your black, your fellow black women? Why they do don't you feel the need us to disrespect us to, to lift up another type of woman? For what? For what? And then it, if, if Tory Lanez had shot a dainty little... Oh, it would have been on the news. A dainty it little tiny been, white woman. Donald Trump would have been tweeting about it. It would have been a big deal. Like, they would have deported him by now. He would be sitting in Brampton where he started. <laughs> exactly. Oh, so let's just be fucking real about that right now. Like, if it wasn't make Penny Stallion who's out here rapping with flow like a man, who's out here telling women to get what they can get. They couldn't wait. They couldn't wait for something to happen. They couldn't wait for something to happen so that they could just be like, oh, anyways, you know, she's this and she's that. And anyways, that, this, that, that. I saw someone say, like, don't call yourself a savage if you can't even. Excuse me? Excuse me. I don't care who you are. If you shoot me in my feet, (laughs) let me tell you something. (laughs) Let me tell. Look. (laughs) Let's get something straight. I don't care how many bitches I done beat up. It don't, if you shoot me on my feet, I'm going to look at you like something ain't right. And oh. the fact of the matter is, she is a motherfucking savage. You know why? Because she didn't tell the police that this motherfucker had a gun. She says she stepped on glass to protect his life, and that's what we do. That's mm. what we do. She knew, she said it epitome. in her life, that she knew that if she told them this man shot me in my feet, that that was that was done with him she at most she probably just wants him to go to canada and live his best life you know what i'm saying and for what because black women are built like that my own personal situation and it is what it is i'll mention it um briefly my own personal situation with my children's father it's been hell it's Mm. been hell and we all know that i have the power to just flip that shit around and and Mm. make it hell for him you know what i mean why am i protecting him because that's what black women do you know what I mean? And then we get like we don't even do it for credit, first of all, but we don't even get so much as silence. Not even a thank you, but your or silence. respect. You turn around and and loudly disrespect us after we save your life. Hmm. I'm confused hmm. about. And again, bringing it back to white women, and I'm only using white women as an example because. And I don't mean this in a Black rude men are fetishizing way. them and praising them like yeah, they're having some in a rude way, but they are the complete opposite of what a black woman is. That's just per- period. It, it just, I'm not saying they can't be strong. I'm not saying they can't be great. But as far as how we move and what, how we do things, they are the complete opposite of us. Latino mm-hmm. women, you know what I mean? There are some similarities. Even with Asian women, there are some similarities. Indian women, there are some similarities with black women. And I can only chuck that up to culture. And I'm, that's period. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. That's that's it. Any any mm-hmm. any person that I've known with a little bit of melanin, with a little bit of a darker tone, even if it's olive, a little bit of spice, a little bit. Of you know salt. what I'm saying? We mm-hmm. understand each other. We understand. Mm-hmm. So I'm. Um, that's the only. Uh, just to clarify, because I don't want people to be like, "Oh my gosh, she hates white people." I do not. However, I am black. I am black first. Yeah. I don't have nobody, but I'm black first, and that's just what it is. So back to my yep. analogy, white women. We stand up for y'all. We take your shit. We, we, we try to save your life afterwards. And even when you talk shit about us, we keep our mouth shut until we can't take it anymore. A white woman will love you until you get mad. When you get mad, she don't see that same man. Hey. When you get mad, she sees a black savage person who has the potential to hurt me that I'm going to have to... 911 operator? That could be your woman. That could be your woman that you have to go back home to. She will call the police as the police come and get you and bail you out. Be the one to bail you out the next day. That makes sense? Hmm. That makes sense? That's control. That is control. And what kind of control is that? That is control. 
to be with somebody that you have to act your best because even when you get mad, even when they make you mad, you're still in the wrong because it's as simple as dialing three numbers to have these people come to your house and fuck up your whole life. And what I had to explain to this man that was debating with me is that, yes, you were right. Let a black woman call the cops on a black man in a domestic situation and the cops will take every opportunity to fuck with that black man. That is not because they give a fuck about us as black women any more than they give a fuck about y'all. It's because they will take any opportunity to fuck with y'all. But let's mm-hmm. let a white woman call the cops on a black woman. They still come into <laughs> us. And they're still treating us the way that they treated y'all. Let's not act like we're not sitting here begging, begging for justice for Beyonce. Yep. And you have begging. the nerve. To say to For me, months. Now, it happened in March. Go through the things that black men go through. Dead that. That's a dub. Dead it. Shut. You sound stupid. You sound stupid. You sound dumb. Because Stop. we're literally in a time where you almost can't post anything without reminding people that we're still fighting for justice for Beyonce Taylor. And you're gonna sit here and try to tell me that Tory Lanez was in the right to shoot this woman because black women get away with a lot more in the eyes of the law than black men do. Are we forgetting that Sandra Bland was 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 taken into custody and then somehow mysteriously fucking somehow exactly mysteriously just ended up dead dragged and mm-hmm. pulled and you know what I'm saying like come on mm-hmm. what what I'm 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 just I'm just really really confused we are at the bottom of the food chain and that is what it is I don't I don't want anybody to come and tell me oh well black women are dis and well black men go through more no 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 Black women, uh, black men may be at, at you know, at low in, in, the, in the food chain. We are at the bottom. We are dirt. We are dust. We are disposable. We are trash. That's how I feel. That's my experience. That's whenever I walk into a room, I don't even get a chance, especially living in Montreal, being a tall, black, dark skinned woman, especially being that I have two kids. I don't even have a chance before. I, I always constantly have to shed my skin for people to see that I am a human being like they are constantly i have to get emotional i have to get aggressive it's not because we want to be that way it's because before we even open our mouths the second we put a foot into a room everybody's mad yes oh my god like for me that my my experience with that exact thing is that as you know i am a dancer i love to dance i've been dancing my whole entire life shout out to dancing page (laughs) and i i my my dance of choice is twerking if you want to call it twerking whining caribbean dance whatever you want to call it i learned to dance in barbados that's where i learned how to dance if you've ever been to barbados and you see those people dance you will understand so when people come for me and they're like oh you're a hoe you were this you were that 99.999 percent of the time it's a black man who tried to slide in my dms and i was like no thank you i'm not interested i'm just here to post what i post and mm-hmm. who talk about it and it's like what I understand that twerking can seem sexual to some people, but unfortunately, I don't give a fuck about what what my what your perception of what I post is. I've never once captioned my posts anything sexual. I don't sell sex. I don't talk about sex online. So I'm confused as to why I have to be tr- treated like a sexual deviant who's asking to be yeah. a certain way or who's asking to be to be disrespected even in person i walk into a room because i'm curvy niggas think oh she wants the d that's not the case here i just want to be respected not respect us don't talk to us leave us alone don't look at us don't talk about us that's the least you could do for us black men if you don't fuck with us no problem because we've been learning to fuck with ourselves trust women have been learning to fuck with each other the times of I don't really have no female friends. Remember back in the day when it was that, oh, I don't really have no female friends because females are, no, women are girl powering the fuck on. Yep. Girl is, women are girl powering it through. So for me, it's like, if you don't fuck with us and you're not on our team, then leave us alone. Don't talk leave about us, us. Don't say nothing. Don't exactly. talk to us. And leave us alone. Leave us alone. And, and again, this is a piece of advice for black men. If you want to date white women, go on ahead. Nobody over here cares. We really don't. All we ask for is your respect. Just for your own convenience, though, 
make sure you make the difference between a woman who dates you because she's dating you and a woman who's dating you because you're the equivalent of this this season's handbag because a lot of y'all are walking around as living accessories and you don't even fucking know it and you don't even know the women who are really riding for you as human beings for women who are carrying y'all around to show off to their friends and take pictures and post because they're trying to be like kim kardashian and have those beautiful little mixed babies Exactly. It's like, I, I just, it's like, again, when we say to protect black, black women and y'all start naming all the reasons why we don't deserve to be protected, it's the exact equivalent of a white person screaming all lives matter at a black yep. lives matter rally. Yep, it is. I, I agree a hundred percent. You just preached my whole life just now. <laughs> you just preached my whole life. I don't even know if I got anything else to say because you just preached my whole life. Basically, um, like I said, black women are, are at the bottom of the food chain. We are disregarded. I don't even know if we made it on the chain, to be honest with you. I don't know if we even made it to the function because, <laughs> excuse me, as our black, you know, I think that in the future we need to just maybe get, um, we'd love to hear uh, from other black women and get their take on their experiences as black women, especially the ones um actually from all even if you're an educated black it doesn't matter because of the color of your skin you always have to fight 10 times harder to be noticed to be respected to be acknowledged we always have to fight 10 times harder that's always my experience i've always been questioned people also don't believe us people didn't believe megan the stallion people are still questioning oh well make me 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 you know what i mean she had to go as far as posting the 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 scars on her feet with stitches and you know she removed it later on but it was really really hard to see um it was very graphic and and but she had to because people just don't believe us they don't believe our pain i i've been pregnant literally feeling sick to my stomach and the black man whose baby i was having was just questioning you know Oh, well, I know other people who were pregnant who weren't sick. Oh, you're just, they don't believe our pain. I've been in hospitals where I was saying I was in pain and still being told, oh, hey, your CAT scan is down the hall. Vicky, you're a witness. You're the one who had to take me to, the, to, to my CAT scan. I couldn't even walk. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't. You know what I mean? They don't, they don't believe us. They don't believe us. I was mistreated. I was misdiagnosed. <laughs> you know? Times. God. It was just a shit show. And the thing about it is, like, it sucks to say, but I'm, like, so used to other people treating us like trash that I'm not even surprised when they do. I'll still defend yeah. myself and do what I have to do. But, but it's, like, of course. It's really like, a sh- fucking gut punch when it comes from another Black person. It really just hurts. It hurts. And the fact that yeah. it hurts and then we're questioned about why it hurts or how it hurts or if it even hurts, it's, like, y'all are... are, are, are every day hurting us and supporting other people to hurt us and then you're confused as to why we're loud while we're angry while we're bitter while we're bitchy why we're all the things that you guys like to put on us which by the way oh my god i have been waiting for so long to start this podcast so i can say this <laughs> every woman acts a certain way every woman when she gets yeah. her feelings when you piss her off every woman every woman every single one is going to either get mad, she might cry, she might yell, she might cuss you the fuck out, she might go to her friends, but every woman does these things. Can somebody explain to me why Black women are the only ones who are labeled as crazy? Yeah. And, and, and it's not that. It's that y'all, I feel like men don't like the fact that Black women are strong. I feel like they don't oh, like they the hate it so much. That we, don't, that we don't resort to tears right off the bat. That we have a little bit of back and forth to give them. That we have a little bit of base of our own in our tone to give them. That, you know what I mean? I feel like they they really, really don't like that. But it's like, give They want give submission. And the comfort to be feminine mm. then. Mm. Because... You can't come at a, you can't, listen to me, black women are boss ass bitches because we have to be. When we leave the house, we don't have no choice. You can't leave the mm-hmm. house with, black with your weak girl panties on because you're not going to make it back. You're not going to nope. make it back crying at least twice. So you got to be a big girl every time you leave the house. So for, for, for a person to live their life like that, that's not the kind of person who's going to just lay down and take it. That's not the kind of person that you can come at aggressively. 
You have to give me my space to be feminine and be soft and allow you, and you have to be a man and let me feel that you're a man for me to let down my vibrato, let down my base. Take, stop saying it with my chest. You feel me? Yeah. You, have, you have to, there's a masculine and a feminine energy that can be felt. If I don't feel like you on a level where, you, where, where we can parlay, then we cannot parlay. And that's exactly. Gonna and, and just to touch base on what you're saying, I agree 100% because that's my main issue. I've been called crazy one too many times. And that comes from me feeling like I'm being disrespected and me stepping up for myself and standing up for myself and being like, hey, you're disrespecting me. Well, guess what? My tone is going to change. My body language is going to change. And now I'm trying to hurt your feelings because you're trying to hurt mine. What's the problem with that? You started it. You know what I mean? I don't understand anybody. Any, I've seen girls of other races do more than just use their mouth. Literally start throwing shit at y'all. Literally start calling y'all kinds of nigger and all kinds of this and that. I oh witnessed it with my eyes. And, and y'all don't do nothing. But for nothing. us to just defend ourselves because, hey, sir, you're cheating. You're having a baby with someone else. Hey, sir, <laughs> you're talking to me. You know what I'm saying? You're talking to me any kind of way. You're having these hoes text me and tell me that, oh, you're, you're having their baby or this and that. You know what I mean? But when we get mad at that, oh... I had to leave her because she had an attitude and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? It's just, it makes absolutely no type of sense whatsoever that a woman can slash your tires while you're watching her. Y'all make an eye contact and she's slashing mm. your tires and you don't mm. do nothing to her. You just like, oh, she's spicy. Oh, she's this. Oh, she's that. You laugh about it with your boys. But for a black girl to just put her hand up and tell you, don't fuck with me, Negro. It's a problem. Yeah, that's the thing. And then it's like, it's a problem in such a way to where you, you it's extreme. It's extreme. Oh, yeah. They want to put their hands on you. They want to, you know what I mean? You're, you're a bitch. You're this, you're that. You know what I mean? Anybody else is like, what's your problem? What are you doing? What's going on? You know, mm -hmm. but for us, it's like, you're a bitch. For us, it's, like, you ass. it's like, yeah, they start squaring up with you. They start trying to fucking choke you up and throw you against the wall. <laughs> then you can't call the police. <laughs> right. It's like, it's like for what? I, I just, I mean, you don't My know animal? How, how you mad at me because I'm mad. You don't know how to act. Like what? Come on now. I just, I just really like, like I said, I feel like women are coming to a point where we're so over y'all that we're mm. just our own thing. So again, I personally would love for y'all to protect us, but if you can't do that, leave us alone. Leave Stop. us alone. Do you look, think about it this way. Think about, I know every, every man has one, that one homeboy or that one friend of me that they don't, they don't fuck with no more. Everybody has that one person they don't fuck with no more or the several people that they don't walk with no more. Think of black women as that person. Do you think about Please. that person? Do you talk about that person on a daily basis? Do you, are you, are you out here talking, going to your friend from friend to friend talking about this person? No. You know why? Because your friend's going to look at you after a while and be like, dude, you a hater. You talking about this person so much y'all not even friends no more you a hater it's the same exactly. thing y'all steady out here for what for what when we're the main ones if that if making any sound was a white woman of any kind of sorts tory lanes would not have made it away from the scene without them arresting him tackling him shooting him whatever they needed to do because it, it's there, there, there's like she said in a time where they're shooting they just shot a young man thank god he's alive seven times in his back yesterday in his back or two days ago this yeah. past week they, this past weekend in his back mm. in his back walking walking seven away. times seven and there times were so many gunshots like i was watching it like sir did you really i mean even just the first one and I was the thing like, is like you, had their hand on they had their hands on him so they could have pulled him out of the car there was like three of them i feel like standing around him if you at, at three people trained officers cannot stop a man from walking into his car then i don't know what to tell you. go back let me tell you something it doesn't matter if this man survived and and is now paralyzed to you know what i mean it, it doesn't when i tell you that if he does not get justice i'm telling you right now mark my words black people will set this motherfucker on fire that's 100 percent because it makes absolutely no sense we all saw what happened to george floyd we all know what happened to brianna taylor and everyone else who came before that and after that so at this point it's like so that's what y'all are doing so when black people start going out there becoming the mm -hmm. murders 
becoming exactly that. They're becoming murders, like just, just not becoming, they have been, but it's like the ones that I'm seeing are just becoming so no holds barred. No, I don't, no fucks given, just nothing. They don't care. It's just like, it's just, there's, it, it, you can see in the videos that there's- Because there are no consequences. Yeah. Yeah. No second there thought. No there's no stop to think, okay, am I going to do this or not? It's, 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 they're doing it. So for me, it's like in a time where they're killing us, like we're savages. Megan Thee Stallion mm. did you a favor. And if that was a white woman, Guarantee you there would have been no fucks given for the fact that black men are being shot and killed on site by police officers right now. She would have called the police because you shot her and you deserve to have the police called on you when you shoot somebody. Excuse me? Exactly. If you're a black woman, you don't deserve, it's sad because if you shoot somebody and someone calls the police on you, that's your, That's what you deserve. I, I'm just saying, if you shoot- It is what it is. Police, Especially if you're not in that street life, if that- That's what I'm you, saying. If, if you're shooting it's, civilians, it's, the police is going to be called. It's not called snitching. You deserve to, to have the police called on you. What am I going to go to the hospital with fucking gunshot wounds in my feet and be like, it was an accident. I don't know what happened. Hello? Right. And then what's fucked up is that you do deserve to have the police called on you. But as a woman, it's almost like, as a black woman, it's almost like we don't even deserve to call the police. We don't yeah. even deserve to have that protection because no. we, we can't even fucking sleep at night knowing what's possibly going to happen or has happened to the person we called the police on, even though they're the one who harmed us. It's like literally, and it's, it happens to us from the time we're kids. Again, I don't know the exact number, but I know that menti menti women menti black women are touched molested beaten they're used oh, yes. in kind of sexual way before they're mm-hmm. even teenagers mm-hmm. and then and a lot of the time it's a family member it's the neighbor mm-hmm. it's the babysitter it's the mm-hmm. person that you know that you see all the time and nobody cares nobody cares you have to still see this person you have to it's still almost like inflicted person. in us like how yeah you know it's I mean? almost like we're we're trained for it's like passed on to us through generations of just like i read a story today on facebook that i found i couldn't even finish reading it Uh, just to touch base on that there was a nine-year-old girl who was raped by the deacon at church she told her mother you know the deacon is messing with me the the mother did not believe her not only that but she called her fast at nine years old she called her fast and she told every single member of the church that her daughter was a liar and that she was a slut (laughs) a nine-year-old i have a 10-year-old daughter there's no way in hell that my daughter knows anything about dick and touching a dick and sex and all that other shit because i've raised her properly so Mm -hmm. there's no way that this nine-year-old child who was sleeping, minding all of her business and woke up to a man on top of her several times, ended up pregnant. Oh. Her mom said she was an embarrassment, sent her to live with this man, oh who then God. continued to impregnate her over the years, her rapist. No one did anything about it. When I say they don't protect black women, they have not, they will not unless we stand up for ourselves. And that is the reason why we're speaking up right now. That's a true story. Yeah, honestly, a nine-year-old. It's, it's it's too much. It's yeah. It's too much, and it's like it's it's too many. It's I knew that there were a lot of black girls who have gone through a lot as as far as being touched your whole life and by black men. I didn't yeah. know this until later on in my adult years. Yeah, because you're sitting in the room with other women, and you're you just like. Oh, what happened yeah. to me? Oh, what happened to you? What happened to me? Right. Like, exactly. it, it's, <laughs> and it's like, I almost felt better about it when I felt like I was alone. You know what I mean? Right. You, right. You almost feel like you're alone. You almost feel like for me anyways, sometimes like, I feel like God put something on me that I can bear because someone else might right. not have been able to hear it. Mm-hmm. But then like to be in a room where I'm sitting with five or six women and all of us have a story. All of us, exactly. It, all it, of us have the story. It, it's young and it's it's sad and it's like nothing yeah. ever done and nobody ever cared. It's yeah. just like, it's so sad. And then the, the number of people who live with it by themselves, who yeah. never told anyone. That and that's is, what people that, don't understand. Yes. It's alarming and it's scary to think that, that, that you can live in, in such a state where someone did something to you, but you can't even say anything to anybody because you feel like you're in the wrong. And for me, that's what it, I held yeah. on to, to, to my story. I held on to it until I, so I don't have I. Mm-hmm. 
brought it up to my parents at all, really, until very briefly last year. And I'm 28 years old. And right. I was a child when these things, when this happened to me. So for me, it's like, just knowing my own story and knowing mm-hmm. how many other women I've met and knowing mm-hmm. that there's so many other women that I have not met who have been through this and then watching black, it's the hurtful part is watching other black men rally around this behavior and cheer yeah. on this kind of hateful behavior. Black women, we're but not perfect. You're, you're, we you're, you're, to you're, to, but we don't deserve to be treated. No, and the thing about it is that, um, what people call an attitude and our snootiness is like, as you say, I had been through it myself. I personally never really mentioned it to anyone in my family. Um, Just because for some reason, just like I said, it it must be passed on through generations that you just have to hold this in. That projects as you just, it's kind of like a shield. You're, you're just kind of like, what do you want? You know what I mean? It's just kind of like, are you here to hurt me? You know, because you've been hurt so many times you've been degraded so many times you've been, disrespected so many times since your youth as you say since i was a child since i was a baby (laughs) you know what i mean so at what point does it stop at what point do people understand that black women need healing and protection and comfort and caring and 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 softness just as much as any other we're women too we're you know yes we have all this you know like we're we're how can i say people think we're like super sexual and sensual and whatnot um because we're comfortable with our sexuality uh people but people don't understand where that barrier stems from no one ever asks us are you okay people always feel like she can handle it she's a black girl oh she's a black woman she knows how to do this oh you're a black woman you know how to you can deal with that you know what i mean boss literally literally mm-hmm. said to me on a day where I wasn't feeling my best. Yeah. After I had just had a conversation with her about how a, another coworker was like just adding work to my day and who was a black man who was not doing the tasks that was asked of him and it was adding work to my day. And I had just had this conversation with her. She gonna look at me later on in the day. She called me in my off in her office because I guess I wasn't answering emails as fast as she would like. And she had the nerve to look me in my face and tell me that because she knows I work usually on a a certain level or I work to a certain caliber, she expects more from me. And I had to look at her and say to her, ma'am, I understand that and I accept the compliment. However, just like anybody else in this room, I'm a human being and not every Mm -hmm. day coming here on 100%. And if you have the nerve to tell me that every day I'm here and it's 100% and you're expecting 100%, Homegirl, the day that I come in on 50, you're going to have to take 50. Especially you're going to have to take. If mm-hmm. you're going to accept 50 from homeboy over there, 30 from homeboy over there, you please, I beg, take my 50 for today at least. You know what I'm saying? Black women mm-hmm. is all, oh, I expect more out of you. And then it's like, not only do they expect it, but when they don't get it, they question you. They oh, yeah. question for, you. you. You saw it's me like, oh, struggle you're not, through. You're not jumping through hoops. So what's what's right. going on with you today? Yeah, exactly. You saw me struggle through my internship, barely making it out. Um, and, and the fact that they had me work a seventh day out of the week um, while I was grieving my father, who just passed away, rest his soul. And I had to push through and, and, and I, I begged them not to make me do it. And they said, you don't have a choice because it's for, you know, your graduation. No problem. I'm here. I'm going to do it. But for them to tell me that the reason why they needed me to work an extra day was because other women of other races couldn't. One of them, there's no reason she just didn't want to, couldn't do it. No problem. Okay, cool. Another one, they had the audacity to tell me, oh, she has children. Excuse me. I have children as well. What is the difference between me, a black woman, and this Asian woman? Oh, she has two boys. Okay, I have a boy and a girl. What is the difference again? What, mm-hmm. Why do I have to work a 12-hour day and they get spared? Because why? Because I'm a Black woman and you're assuming that I can do it, right? And my kids are monkeys, so they can sit in a room all day and I'd be parented. That's how you felt. Mm-hmm. Point blank, period. Yeah, because that's what it would have to be. Because if you have, if you have me taking calls from my home and you don't give a damn that I have kids, but let the kids be running around crazy in the background and they hear that on the calls they're going to be questioning you so of course they're expecting you to put your kids somewhere in a room for 12 hours a day while everybody else gets to enjoy their weekend because as a black woman you can do that your kids are wild anyways it doesn't matter they don't it's just like push through push through push through 
it's like some days I don't want to push through. Some days I want to just. And we're allowed. Yeah, I just some days I don't have it. And and the thing about what I want black men to understand, us asking for respect is not us bashing you. Us showing you how you make us feel and showing you all the things that you do to us is not us us bashing you. It's telling y'all our truth. And the fact that you that black men are 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 the ones who the world right now is begging people to protect y'all. Stop killing black men. Stop this. Hands up. Don't shoot. All of that. Black lives matter. It's mainly revolving around the fact that black men are being killed. So it's like in a time where we're fighting for for our black men to just be able to leave their house and come home safe. I don't understand what black men don't understand. We want there to be some kind of peace at some point. And there cannot be peace with us as a whole if we don't respect each other. And it's like, when it's not light skin versus dark skin, it's American Blacks versus West Indian Blacks versus African Blacks, then it's Black men versus Black women. It's stupid. It's so stupid. And I just wish that instead of seeing it as a reason to further, like, because I feel like when we are like, hey, you guys are doing this, can you please stop? They're like, oh, I'm going to do it 10 times worse. How yeah. dare you tell me to stop? It's just- oh, that's my life story, 100%. <laughs> defending myself has backfired so many times like i'm like what like it makes no sense like you just preached my whole life (laughs) it's just like it's not we're not coming for y'all we just want y'all to stop coming for us that's really what what it is and also you guys have to understand as well that nobody's gonna respect us until y'all respect us please and then on top of that Again, oh, and another thing, <laughs> another thing, when y'all see these Black women out here with these white men, leave them alone. Leave them alone. Leave those women alone. Because I can guarantee you that those are women who have tried and they tired. And they met somebody or found something that makes them happy and it has nothing to do with the color of their skin. Leave that woman alone if you're not going to protect black women leave us alone when we choose something else because we choose something else is because we're looking for protection it's either protection financially it's either protection emotionally it's either protection physically and in no way am i saying that white men are better than black men that is not what i'm saying I am solely attracted to hey, black look, men. Hey, look, it ain't work out over here. Let me go over there and see what's me, going on. Personally, I'm solely attracted to black men. And that's just my preference. It's not on purpose. It's just what I like. So I would be stupid as hell to sit here and say that anything white or anything other than black is better than black because I'm a black woman that likes black men. What I'm saying is if a woman has been through her journey and at some point in her journey, she decided I'm done with this or didn't decide anything, just met a man who happens to be white or happens to be something other than black and fell in love with that person and was treating, being treated right by that person. You have no right to say anything about that because meanwhile, black men are out here dating women for reasons that have nothing to do with anything. Nothing, no reason, just because she's right. not black. Just because she's not black. So yeah, when you see a black woman black. with a white man, leave her alone, leave exactly. her alone. Leave her be, because if y'all can do it, we can do it. And we don't have to explain ourselves to you because y'all don't explain yourselves to us. And honestly, like you say, most black women, like, you know, we start off loving black men. Um, it's just that we end up leaning more towards whoever gravitates towards us. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Whoever shows us affection and, and respect, mm-hmm. we're going to gravitate towards that. So if it just does not happen to be a black man and it happens to be we don't do it because oh i'm sick of black man i'm just gonna go here and ding, 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 ding. it happens because that is what gravitates towards us and unfortunately for us nine times out of ten that man is fetishizing us so it's a fucking lose lose <laughs> half of the time you know what i mean like it's a fucking lose lose half of the time so we just need like you say for everyone to just kind of let's just stop portraying this image of black women being, you know, these sexual deviants and these, um, uh, I feel like they demonize us a little bit. Like we're just like the way that we're treated, it's like, we don't even get a chance. What makes me laugh about it is that we're everything that's negative, but you'll still date a woman who's doing everything that a black woman does. Who's not black. Do you know that today? I, I literally, not to be rude, 
but I literally had to turn my phone off and not my phone, had to shut down Instagram and throw my phone somewhere after watching a video of <laughs> two uh, teenagers who happened to be white dancing. And it was just, you know, you know how how kids dance nowadays, the trends that are- that The are, TikToks. The TikToks and the and everything <laughs> working has become very popular. Um, I had to turn it off because I, first of all, I didn't look good. Okay. It didn't look good. <laughs> I, I've seen white people that can dance. These were not them. So I turned it off. Um, that's for one. For two, it pisses me off a little bit because for years, it's all oh, these black people and they're gyrating. Yep. These black women and their gyrations of the hip. Now every bitch know how to, how, how to twerk. Every, oh, yes, yeah, so trend. Every, yep. every, white, every white girl is twerking. Every white girl is taking pictures with her booty out first. Every white girl got her edges done. Every white girl got her, her seven-inch acrylics on. Every white girl got her black girl aesthetic on. But Most yet, of the WAP challenges that I've seen were by white women. Yeah, um, of course. What else would it be? What else would it be? <laughs> what else would it be? Because when it's 20, when, in 2020, when a, when a, when a black... When oh, a wait, black we wouldn't be able to do that on TikTok. Bike, you, you better jump on. Oh, girl, I have seen white kids dancing to WAP with their parents. The Everything parents is whole. Like, yeah. If a black woman was doing that, it would be a problem. If a black woman was ever in a video twerking with her daughter to WAP, the internet would break. CPS would be at her door. Oh, yeah. You understand me? I literally watched a video, a TikTok yesterday, where a white woman was twerking hands to knees with her child who looked like she was four or five years old. Oh, no. Which is cute when you do it. It's cute when it's blonde hair on mm. blue eyes, on white skin. But let it have been a black woman all oh this is ratchet this is ridiculous this is a hot ghetto mess just oh, because black it's not mm -hmm. black doesn't make it any less a hot ghetto mess just because it's not black doesn't make it any less trifling and that's my problem a black woman can do one thing that you consider wrong and she's the, the, the she's a witch she's the, it's the end of the world a white woman can do something that is trifling as fuck but nobody, nobody says nothing about it. And I'm extremely confused. I'm, and and what's, what's, what's crazy about it is that we're taking heat for doing things that we've been doing, things that are from our culture. Yeah. And people can just do the shit. <clears throat> right. What is that? And it's, it's, just, it's just, to me, it's just like, y'all gonna have to stop. Because at this point, if you don't realize that other women, unless... Unless, unless they are being their own selves, a lot of the women out here are, are, are following a black aesthetic from the way that they do their makeup, do their brow. Let's be black in the day, white women used to, to swipe up the eyebrow pencil it was on the there thing and go. This little piece of eyebrow. Let's be real. They used to get that shit plucked out or, or, or waxed off and draw that shit on real quick and go. Now, even the makeup, even the way they contour their face. Do you see the shades of For contour? Me, it was the bangs in the 90s. Like, the bangs were the white girl bangs. <laughs> Them joints was right above the eyebrows in the yeah. middle of the forehead. Now they all know how. Now they all got it. Now they all got a lace front. All the Beckys know got, got a hair supplier. But enhancement. I cannot go enhancement. into... I cannot go into a hair supply store and not see at least two Beckys in there in the extension section. But yet black, but yet we still to this day, black women are still taking heat for wearing extensions, even though the shit came from us. Yeah. We're still taking heat. We're still, we're still being told that a woman with the weave is, is less black, but, but a woman who's in a black store, who's white buying the weave, that's perfectly fine. That, that makes sense to you. We don't even look right in white people's hair. Why would a white girl need a lace front? That's the part. It's like, who took your edges? I don't care. <laughs> who, who stole your edges that you got to be in here? Like, so when I'm trying to buy my weaves and, and they ran out, nine times out of ten, the fuckers took it. So, I, look, you're preaching. That's you all I have to say. I, just, I want somebody to make it make sense to me. I just want one person to make it make sense because I don't understand how 
there's people who see these things and then there's other people who don't. And I really believe that the people who don't are just choosing to be ignorant because you can't tell me that you don't see these things happening. It doesn't make sense. I literally had somebody, a man, disrespect the fuck out of me and try to put my business in the street. And when I had to call him and tell him about it and tell him that I didn't appreciate it, his reaction to me, mind you, this being a man who's known me since I was 13 and who has been cussed out by me before, his reaction to me was, oh, why are you calling me on that Cardi B bullshit? Mm-hmm. What? What is a Cardi B? What is a Cardi B? Sir, what is a Cardi B bullshit? I'm Victoria motherfucking Wickham, and I have been cussing you out since I was 13 years old with the same disrespectful ass mouth. So at what point did I turn into Cardi That's B? That's a Canadian man to say, thing to say. To Cardi B. Yeah, it's a Canadian men thing to say because it's like they don't know that there's a whole community of black women. <laughs> you know, Cardi B's not the only one. There's a whole community of black women. It's a culture. I grew up around it. I am it. You know what I mean? I, I literally soaked myself up in that shit. And, you know, I know many women who are part of that community who will tell you about yourself the very same way, who stick their tongues out and twerk at the you know at, at the sound of, of of whatever song it is that's playing at the club and it is what it is you know what i mean so I for know, him, like, it's, it's a canadian man thing to say like do you think that cardi b and megan Thee Stallion and all these girls amber rose and all these girls who are out here being fiercely themselves you think they came up with that that's just <laughs> who, you think they sat down and wrote out this 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 character that's who they are so what makes you think that another person who is another person who is outspoken and is themselves can't do the same? Right. It's just it's just it's just very very confusing to me. Yeah. And again, like I said I'm almost over asking for for like answers. I just want y'all to leave us the fuck alone. Leave us leave us the fuck alone. Leave it leave us alone. If you're not here to protect us, if you don't love us, if you're not on our side, if you're not on our team, you don't respect your mother, your daughter, your sisters, your aunts, your nieces, whatever the case may be, please find a hole and and crawl in it and just stay there. The rest of y'all, please get your fucking balls out of your asshole and stand up be men and protect black women at all costs no it's not okay for Tory Lanez to shoot a woman in her fucking feet doesn't matter if she punched him in the back of his head it mm-hmm. does not matter it and doesn't then, matter and while she's walking away that's the part he's such a fucking lame ass loser like that is just one of the most pathetic stories i've heard in my entire 31 years for a man <laughs> <laughs> come on now come on bro and then you want to call yourself a sh- come on who did you if you standing up to megan the stallion who are you shooting in the street what are you talking about who who, who are you boss who the the mice in the corner of the trap house who are you standing up to Yo, are you the guy who was handing yeah. out the waters in the trap house are you the one who who are Yo. you were you the one making the deliveries Yo. and getting the pizza and the food for everybody in the trap house is that who you were because i don't understand what i'm saying what kind of street life? For me, for me, it's the part where somebody said, um, shoot, what did they say? Oh, somebody said, oh, well, you know, he can't just have a woman beat up on him. He's a rapper. He has a reputation to uphold. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Look, we wouldn't even have known that she was beating up on his midget ass had he not shot her in the feet. We wouldn't even have known anything at all if he didn't what decide to just like, bang, bang, whatever what the fuck it is. Me, you, like Kevin Hart says. <laughs> what does that even mean? Like, I am so confused. What? He has to keep his street, street creds. No. The rappers who, the people, them who were the first members of NWA are from the streets and they're not even out here claiming to be thug life, chitty, chitty, bang, bang. No, people who really are living that life don't really want to be living it. It's not, there's nothing fun about it. How many ever times that nigga got shot? And since then he's been okay. I don't think he's been shot since. (laughs) (laughs) But I don't think that man's been perfectly fine since his first brush with death so I'm really, like it's not funny i'm just i'm just really like confused as to what him having a rapper's reputation has to rapping is a career 
It's a career yes. that is done from the studio. There's so many rappers that are not street niggas either. Like, it doesn't make any sense. And Tory does not, I don't know. Like, again, I'm not a fan of Tory Lane, so I don't know. Maybe he has gangster music, but all the songs that I didn't like were some real sweet shit. So I don't really, I don't, I don't know what his gangster music sounds like, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. I just don't, I would not, Tory Lane is just not someone who I, I, I don't think that he's ever built his image around being a gangster. I don't think that he, again, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't feel like he has. And again, if you so gangster, a real gangster wouldn't have had to shoot no woman in her feet. Yeah. A gangster might have smushed her at the most, pushed her out the car while I was still moving, but he ain't gonna shoot no woman in his, in her feet. Let's be real. You not. That doesn't make no sense. That makes you weak. That makes. And he would only put his hands on her if, if it was like a physical altercation between the two kind of just to get her off of him it wouldn't be no like i don't know one street nigga that i ever felt like i was disrespected by that i ever felt like lived by a code where women needed to be um hit or you know what i mean like I, it just it does not make any sense and all the all the ones that are standing up for him are exposing themselves as the losers that they are and that's a point blank period mm -hmm. and it's crazy that people a lot of people like to judge men that you would consider street niggas or niggas who are in the street. A lot of people like to condemn them, condemn them and judge them for things that they do. But like you said, a lot I've never been in a situation with a street nigga where I didn't feel safe. I exactly. Feel safe. I don't like as long as you're a level headed woman just like yeah. she is it there's no it's just hey can I leave? Okay, no problem. And I've I have not and had a situation like that. And the thing is like <laughs> it's the part where people were like like even women like dre and michelle you look like a clown because i don't understand so how i i used to love oh that oh my girl. god i love but the for fuck her, out of dre and michelle man i was so disappointed to hear that not only did you make a comment but it was a comment that led you to lose endorsements because because you sound dumb as a woman, as a woman who has been in situations herself, who I'm sure she's spoken about, you know, protecting women her own self in the past. I don't understand how her and other women can can make fun of something like that just to appeal to whatever it is that the narrative of a black man is. It doesn't. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be that. You can support mm -hmm. black men and still tell them when they're wrong. And if and if and if it's a black man who can't be told anything or can't be told when he's wrong, then he's not the black man that you want to be around. He's still got some growing to do. Right. I don't understand. I just don't understand what, what is funny about her calling herself a savage in a song and then being shot. I'm not, I'm confused about what is funny about that. I'm confused about what- A savage is anything. The thing about it is like a savage could be like, she's for example she's in school while she's you know building a career as a rapper that's savage as fuck that's boss as fuck do you understand what i'm saying like people it's the people who don't have any type of intellect or depth that are talking that's why we need to shut those voices out because it's not even somebody worthwhile it's not even somebody worth sitting down and having a conversation or a debate with because if you don't understand the fact that she is a musician and that her saying she's a you know she's a she's a savage or whatever the case may be to refer to that as like oh don't go around calling yourself a, a savage then when you get shot you're snitching excuse me according to what if anything i am a, i love fucking making me sound i'm a fan if she's my mom right <laughs> or anything she'll talk about having hitters she'll talk about having friends and people around her who handle that kind of life because she's not in it She's made mm -hmm. it very clear. That she's she's made, it very clear. Mm -hmm. made it clear several times that she's not in it. And let's be real, Savage, if I'm not mistaken, is a song about, it's a little sexual, but it's also a song about feeling yourself. It's, yeah. hello, Beyonce's not in the streets and she remixed the song. So y'all sound stupid as fuck. Exactly. Y'all sound stupid. You sound stupid. Because the song is obviously not talking about Savage as far as being in these streets she's talking about as far as how she handles men and that is her own prerogative now i just want to understand if he had shot her in the back of her head and killed her will we all be sitting here talking about some oh my god poor uh meg poor uh, r.i.p meg she was such a great soul we would that would be what everybody would be preaching but because exactly. he just shot her in her feet and she's alive it's it's 
It's oh, ha ha, she got shot. And then on top of ha ha, she got shot. It's how dare you come out and say that this man shot you because he did. And because I deserve to be able to I say that. I don't understand did. that at all. And there's so many, and there's even women. There's even I, I, black I, women that are like standing anything. up for, for Tori. There's black women that are standing, and it's, it's just a bunch of brainwashing and just bullshit. It doesn't make any sense. There is no excuse or reason for him to have done that. And that is it, point blank, period. And there's I don't no reason that she had any intention on exposing him. I think the exposure came from the fact that, again, his team took the opportunity to hide him, isolate him, send him wherever the fuck they need to send him so that he can be hidden for a little bit and proceed to do interviews. And and even her friends kept quiet. Yeah, release statements basically saying that she hit him and she cut her her foot on glass. And if she did get shot, it was in self-defense. It's like, it's like, I don't think she planned on saying anything, but I'm yeah. telling you one motherfucking thing right now. I'm not about that life, but I grew up around that life. I grew up around a lot of people who were in that life. And right. again, not about it, but grew up around it. And I could tell you one thing, snitches, usually they're not favored, but you cannot tell me that six, nine went to jail for all. And ultimately he, he biggity snitched to get out and he's out here freely freely walking around disrespecting the fuck out of Nipsey Hussle Mm. and nobody's touching him but Megan Thee Stallion can't get online and speak her truth after people have been bashing her and after the person who shot her team has been telling lies about her and defaming her character fuck Mm. out of here I would have sang like a motherfucking canary he's lucky that she waited He's, he's lucky that she waited as long as she did. Because let me tell you something. The first thing that I would have heard from his team, that video would have been posted. Because you're not going to shoot me and then turn around and try to make it, make it look bad on my character after I told the cops that I cut my foot on glass to have you get away free. Exactly. Nah, sir. Nah, it doesn't work like that. He, they, if that. anything, Megan is a boss-ass bitch. Because she got shot in her feet. She went to the hospital. She got, got it taken care of and she kept her mouth shut. Yeah, his she, she still hasn't keep, told he, the police. Their she mouth still shut. hasn't told the police, though. That's the crazy thing. Uh, Takashi is an informant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she, she still, she told the internet. She what? did not tell the police. She didn't press charges. She's not in court going, battling back and forth with this man. She got on live and she talked to her fans. You know what I mean? That's it. That's all. It doesn't make sense. The people who have been talking to it. Exactly. That's Look, nice. we could be here all night talking about all this shit. All night talking about this shit. But I think we might have another episode <laughs> touching base on this because it is just, mm, it is just, deep. It's, it's intense. It's and, deep. Um, something we spoke about in our show earlier today was, um, you know, women, Black women especially, having been touched or molested or abused in some mm-hmm. way as at a young age um just because we're wrapping it up now i do feel like we should mention that our next show you guys really 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 want to tune in because we're going to introduce a theory that we have called safety pussy Mm. (laughs) hello safety pussy so just real brief just to give you a little bit of the sauce safety pussy is basically exactly what it sounds like so if you've ever been in a situation where you gave away some pussy that you might not have been ready to give away, this story, this, 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 that show is going to be for you. It's going to be for all the women who's been put in a situation where they felt like I can either, you know, risk making this person upset or I can give them what they want and make it home safe. So we're definitely going to touch on that next week. I believe that show is going to be, um, We'll keep y'all posted. <laughs> yeah, we're going to keep it posted. But um, I believe that show is going to be, um, it may change, but I believe that one is going to be, is it consensual, safety pussy, or flat out rape? So, um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely want to tune into that one. Mel, I don't know if you have anything you want to add. Uh, no. I mean, <laughs> I feel like we said pretty much a lot. We said, um, we, we touched base on, um, Oh my goodness, we touch base on so much, but like you say, next episode, we're going to touch base on what safety pussy is and the different levels of men violating you. Um, 
even what, when what it's a secret. Exactly. Exactly. Um, is it rapey or is it rape? <laughs> you yeah. know? Um, and, and nonetheless, all of it is inappropriate and unacceptable and <laughs> you deserve to stand up for yourself. Yeah, exactly. So that's going to be our next show. I really, really appreciate everyone who's listened so far. Um, we are. Yes, we are, love y'all. We love y'all. You forgot <laughs> in the beginning that this show was recorded on Zoom. So, mm-hmm. it, so if it gets a little. Dip, 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 dip. <laughs> If it sounds like a live conference call, it's because it is. <laughs> we apologize, but um, yeah, hey, you know, Miss Rona's here. But um, yeah, I feel yeah. like that's it. I think we touch base on everything. Yes, girl. And thank you so much for coming back to the Crazy Bitch Factory. We hope to see you again whenever it is that we drop our next show. Yes. The, so until next time. All of us. Follow, Follow us, us. Crazy Bitch Factory uh, Inc. on Instagram, on, on Twitter. Twitter, on Spotify, on Apple yep. Music. So, uh, oh, Apple Music, on podcasts on Apple. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I mean. Get just All you got to do is go and log into the podcast thing. Type in Crazy Bitch Factory Inc. We're going to pop up. Click follow. Boom. There you go. Take yourself on over to Instagram. Click follow. Boom. There you go. Take yourself on over to Twitter. Click follow. Boom. There you go. Ain't no problems. You ain't going to miss a show. Exactly. There you go. And that is all for our second episode. And we will catch y'all soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>